three of the best of seven. The series tied at one. Last Sunday in Chicago, the Lakers defeated the Bulls 93-91, a game played at a, a very high level throughout. Sam Perkins with the game winner from downtown. Magic Johnson with a triple-double. Game two in Chicago Wednesday night. The Bulls in a blowout, 107-86. Sparked by Jordan overall, 15 of 18 from the field. And at one point, he hit 13 in a row. The Bulls control the tip. The backcourt of Paxson and Jordan. Up front, Cartwright with Grant and Pippen. Harris Grant had an excellent game on Wednesday, as did Bill Cartwright. Magic guarding Jordan was able to convert on his first field goal attack. And the question is answered immediately. Michael Jordan picking up Magic Johnson in the backcourt, pressuring him out here. And I, I would think that Phil Jackson will play it the same way. Start Jordan on him and then change somewhere along the line. Nice fake by Divac, who has come up strong in the playoffs. And the game is tied at two. Talking about that yesterday with Phil Jackson as Jordan goes to the hoop. On the back tap, Pippen keeps it alive. Here is Paxson. Oh, he is on fire, eight for eight, the other night in Chicago. And he drills his first attempt. Bulls lead it four to two. Phil Jackson telling us that probably would be the plan. Michael Jordan picking up the early fouls and going up against Magic Johnson the other night. Scotty Pippen did a terrific job against Magic. Worthy, yes. Tied at four. Another part of the chess match. Immediately we see Byron Scott entering the ball to the post up man Perkins. Rather than Magic, they've got the shooter Byron entering, trying to get him more shots in this game. Byron Scott has not been able to get going offensively, and of course has had his hands full on the other end with Jordan. Magic checking the floor, looking for the break, did not see it. Magic spinning and then dumping off to Devon. It counts and the foul. Foul committed by Cartwright. You can tell that the Lakers are prepared for the trap coming from the baseline. Jordan turns in baseline. As the rotation takes place, Devots finds the opening in the middle of the lane to receive Magic's pass. Perkins was ready, sneaking under the basket in case they needed one more pass. Lakers take the 7-4 lead. And a defense from the form crowd. They have been into it in terms of decibel level during the playoffs. And a blocking foul called on Scott. Byron Scott, the other night, picked up fouls in a hurry in that third quarter. He was taken right out of the game. Anytime you're going to get up that close on Michael Jordan, he's so good taking the ball and facing up on the basket. It's a problem for him. Cartwright. Not the touch he was looking for, but Grant is right there. Lakers lead it by the score of 7-6. Horace Grant, game two, had a 10 for 13 for 20 points. A big bounce back after his performance in game one. Evots called for the travel. So the Bulls will take over. Game four here in Los Angeles. Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time. That'll be four here on the West Coast. Please note that change in time in game five here at the Forum. Wednesday night, 9 o'clock start Eastern time. Jordan with the tip. And Perkins rebound. Divac's making a nice play, covering for the beaten defender, Byron Scott. Divac gets a piece of it, changes the shot. Magic spinning, and he was hacked. Pippen came over to help out. And Scotty Pippen picks up his first. One thing that they were concerned about was getting much more help defensively on Michael Jordan. No one man can play him alone, but the team defense can affect him. Magic after the miss, pushing the ball back, and unusual for the Lakers, a shot going up after only eight seconds was taken off the 24 second clock. 20 second timeout call with three minutes gone by in this first quarter, and the Lakers leading the Bulls by the score of seven to six. Bulls have hit three of the first eight. Lakers three for three 
from the field. Mike Dunleavy in his first season as head coach of the L.A. Lakers has not had success when he's gone to the bench over the first two games. A.C. Green has had his difficulties, did not shoot well in game two. Terry Teagle has not done it. Only one for five from the field. Magic Johnson with two shots. The Lakers hit 21 of 22 from the line in game number two. The only miss by James Worthy. The foul shooting was terrific. 21 of 22 represents the second best in NBA final history. Here's Grant. Back in 86, the Boston Celtics hit 23 of 24 against the Houston Rockets. It's the Lakers with a 9-8 lead. And now we see Byron Scott bringing the ball up the floor against the pressure. He'll make the entry pass in, treating Scott almost as the point guard now, and Magic as the off guard posting up down low. Magic looking to get into it offensively early. That's his first field goal. Lakers lead by three. Pippen not given that outside shot. Worthy all over him. And here's it from the crowd. Good defensive sequence by the Bulls. Paxson. Yes. John Paxson again. Eight for eight. In Chicago, make it two for two thus far tonight. Lakers with a one-point lead. Now Worthy posting Pippen. Oh, a clean shot. Worthy able to go glass, and he's extended to a three-point lead. Lakers have hit five of five from the field. Grant taking advantage of the overplay by Divots. But the Lakers have a much different mindset now on offense than they had in game two. They understand that the ball will be taken out of Magic's hands. The next person who catches the pass from Magic must advance it, take it up the floor, and then get him into their offense. Worthy angling for the excellent position against Pippen. Lakers 15 and the Bulls 12. Four and a half gone by. On right played by Perkins. Scott with the hand check. Here's Grant. Devots poked it away. Bulls able to get back. Byron Scott having difficulty locating a shot. Magic spinning and hitting. Beautiful move by Magic Johnson on Michael Jordan. Because of Magic's size, if you're going to trap from the baseline, that defensive player away from the ball must come soon. He must get there to form a trap. A double team can't give him a clear look at the basket. And Jordan hits from long range. His second field goal. He's two out of five. Here's the pressure on Johnson. Perkins back to help out. Lakers 17-14 over Chicago. And the Lakers have opened up by hitting their first seven field goal attempts. Shot clock, down at five. Three, two, and Devots fired it up. That's not the kind of shot that they wanted, and again, it was a result of the good Bulls defense forced that shot clock down before Magic could get the ball back and start them into the play that they wanted to run. Nice ball movement. Paxson locating Pippen. Taking advantage of the Lakers double teaming. It's exactly what the Bulls coaching staff wanted. Start the ball on one side of the floor, reverse it as Magic comes up lame as he comes over the half court line. And Magic try to walk it off, hobbles back to the Laker bench. Lakers lead it by one point. Jordan keeping the constant pressure on Magic Johnson as he brings it up the floor. Magic. Looking ahead to find his teammates. The right foot steps on Jordan's right foot. Magic comes up lame right there as he comes over the half court line, then calling for the timeout. All right, he is the czar of the Telestrator. Now let's go to Steve Jones. All right, Marv, uh, he did step on the foot of Jordan. He turned it slightly, told trainer Gary Vee he did. He was going to give it a go. We'll keep an eye on it and make sure that he's all right. Back to you. All right, Steve, 548 remaining. In this first quarter, it's the Lakers 17 and the Bulls 16. Laker ball as we resume. Here is Byron Scott. A rare instant of daylight for Scott. 
Jordan from downtown. Michael Jordan with a three-pointer. And it gives the Bulls a 19-17 lead. Jordan has seven points. Tough to tell the effect Patrick Johnson has uh, suffered. And Joe Crawford with the call against the Bulls. That's the second committed by uh, Cartwright. Both big men down low, fighting for position. Cartwright eventually coming around, trying to front the post player. Called for the hole. Again, Magic looking to put a move on Jordan. The help came over, and Magic able to find Perkins. And that's the second man. d -box is the first option when he flashes across. If he's taken by a defensive player on the rotation, then the second man, Perkins, flashes right in behind him. Here's Jordan. Yes. Well, Michael Jordan getting off fast in this first quarter, which is not necessarily a good sign, as the Bulls have discovered during the course of the regular season and in the playoffs. That's the case in game number one last Sunday afternoon. Michael with nine points and two assists off the turnover. The Bulls back to the offense. They lead it 21-19. Lakers with a hot shooting. First quarter hit their first seven. And they're 8 for 10. Bulls have also shot well again. They're 10 for 15. Jordan looking for Grant. It'll be Laker ball. A little bit of the same treatment by the Lakers that time. They came back and trapped Jordan from the baseline. His teammate going away, not looking for the basketball. Jordan anticipating he would come back to it. As a result, the turnover. Will Purdue. Has come on for the first time. Purdue for Cartwright. He is up front with Grant and Pippen. Nice pass and worthy. Able to complete the play to tie the game at 21. Lakers running some isolation stuff now. Raising the weak side of the floor. Playing basically three-man basketball. Pippen with the swing move. Rejected by Perkins. Shot clock at seven. Paxson. So Paxson finally misses after hitting ten in a row. Pippen will stop. The long arms of Sam Perkins rejecting that shot. Perkins getting two shot blocks. The same trip down the floor that time by the Bulls. Perkins now posting on Purdue. Magic Johnson. Perkins actually intercepted that pass, but Worthy able to hit, and the Lakers lead at 23-21. Fast start by James Worthy. He has 10 points. He's hit five out of five. Phil Jackson screaming in the face of John Paxson, who did not hear him. Phil asking for the timeout and finally got it. Paxson couldn't decide whether Phil was talking to Joe Crawford, the official, whether he was talking to him. It's 2.51 remaining with the timeout taken. Two minutes, 40 seconds to go in this opening quarter. It's the Lakers with a 23-21 lead. Laker backcourt doing it once again. The combination of Jordan and Paxson. Here's Perkins. Now Jordan making the move around Scott. And it will be Laker ball. Michael Jordan, four for eight for nine points. Magic Johnson has attempted two shots. He's hit both. He has five assists, along with six points. Here is Scott, and he was fouled. The Lakers trying so hard to get Byron Scott into the offense. That time ran a triple screen for Scott along the baseline. Starting him on the right side of the floor and then running him underneath the backboard along screens by three big men. John Paxson called for the foul. The hand for Worthy sitting down with ten points. A.C. Green has checked in for the first time. He comes off an off shooting performance after the excellent series against Portland. Someone figured out that Byron Scott, since Michael Jordan, has come into the league, and they have only met 
twice each season has shot under 40 percent when he's been matched up with Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. He says he's not effective but you get the idea. He, he certainly is taken out of his game at both ends. Well it's a long day of travel right there by Scottie Pippen on his way to the basket. It's a long day knowing that uh, come game time that night you have to go head up against Michael Jordan. You know you're going to get teammates uh, help from your teammates rather but basically it's still you against him in the matchup. It has its effects on you. you use up a lot of energy at the defensive end and then Jordan's a pretty good player himself defensively when he's playing against you. Devots and the rebound handled by Grant. And it had a half to go in this first quarter. Lakers have a two point lead. Both clubs have shot exceptionally well in this first quarter. Shot clock down at five. Three. Jordan. Yes. Michael Jordan with a fadeaway. The shot clock was down at two. The game is tied at 23. And that time Scott played about as well as you can play him. Just too much at the offensive end, Michael Jordan. Scott was stripped. Jordan recovers. Lakers were looking for a foul. Oh, nice give and go. And Grant. In perfect position, Bulls lead 25-23. Lakers have hit 10 of 14 from the field, yet they trail by two. Magic checking the clock, goes to the spin. He was met by Purdue. And Joe Crawford with the call at, at center court. It's on Purdue who came over to help out. Let's go back a moment ago when Scott was playing Jordan right there, challenges the shot, but the difference in size and the fade, the elevation by Jordan gets the shot off. He winds up with a clean look at the basket. Magic Johnson in game number two, shot only four of 13. He finished with 14 points, missed a number of layoffs, layups, and appeared to be very frustrated by calls he felt he was not getting He felt there were a lot of late rotations, players coming over from Chicago at the last second, bumping him from the side as he re was releasing the shot, and he lost his concentration there. Bulls holding for a final shot as this first quarter winds down. The game is tied at 25. Jordan fires. Time running out. That's it for the first quarter here at the Forum in Inglewood. The Lakers and the Bulls are tied at 25. Michael Jordan, 11 points, two assists, off five out of 10 for the field. Magic Johnson, two for two, eight points and five assists. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. Touched on earlier, Byron Scott of the Los Angeles Lakers charged that Michael Jordan was taunting him and the Laker bench uh, following some of his explosive moves. In game number two, there you see the quote, we noticed Michael taunting our bench. That's not something to do early in the series. Got us upset and we'll be ready at home, says uh, Byron. Well, I asked about the taunting. And here's Michael's reply. Well, I guess if you want to say taunting, uh, I was excited about what I was doing, uh, what I did. I showed my emotions, fist-wise, uh, my mouth-wise, but I never said anything to any of the players. I never pointed fingers. Uh, I've just never been able to do that against a team of their net, uh, status. Well, the Lakers are not buying it. Certainly, Michael was, was very pumped up, but he claims he was just excited by what was, was happening. What do you think? When you lose by 21 points, you find any way you can to get your teammates ready for the next game coming up. You try to gain that edge. Well, Michael uh, said to me that he felt that the Lakers were trying to motivate themselves off the taunting. Here is Magic. Yes! That was just within two-point range. Second quarter underway, and the Lakers now lead 27-25. In the first quarter, the Lakers 10 for 14 from the field while Chicago at 12 for 21. So we have 72% and 57% shooting. A 
again, the strong inside move by Horace Grant. He is now five for six from the field. The game tied at 27. The Bulls inside people do an excellent job of looking and finding openings and then flashing to them when it looks like someone else is the first option. And Devots getting great position against Purdue. Lakers certainly not discouraged about the way the Bulls are defending against the post-up here in the first half. No, they were prepared in the first quarter. Seven post-up opportunities, five times they scored for 10 points. Scotty Pippen with his second field goal. Worthy tipping it to Tigo. Oh, terrific play by Worthy to recover on the pass that was overthrown. Perhaps the most important thing is that he helped to get Terry Tigo off in 24 minutes in the first two games, only one for five. Tigo certainly welcomed the layup. Substitutions by both clubs. Bill Cartwright returning. Craig Hodges has come on. Cliff Levingston will check in. And Terry Teagle on the floor for the first time. As Magic looks up the floor, the pass is a little bit long. Worthy with one hand releases to Teagle, understanding that Hodges was sneaking underneath for the possible steal. Lakers with a 31-29 lead. And at 40, gone by in the second quarter. Cartwright was feeling around for the defender Worthy, and then lost it. Magic threw the double team momentarily. Uh, he feels it. Magic feels the touch. He's four for four. He has 12, and the Lakers lead by four. Unusual that Magic would come down, and if there's not anything happening in the transition, just pull up and shoot with 15 or 16 remaining on the clock. Cartwright off the fake. Levingston try to keep it alive. Last touch by Magic Johnson. And a timeout has been taken by the Bulls. 9.44 remaining in the second. While we were away, the highlight over the last 30 seconds, a block by Terry Teagle of a jump shot attempt of Michael Jordan. That's been it. And now Teagle on the line off the foul call. Here's Armstrong coming on for the first time. B.J. replacing Craig Hodges. Terry Teagle in his ninth season out of Baylor. Armstrong guarded by Larry Drew who entered the game following the timeout. Here is Grant. Rare outside shot for Horace Grant. Last touch by the Lakers. Chicago maintaining possession. Marv Albert, Mike Fratello, Bob Rashad, Steve Jones. From the form in Inglewood coming up at halftime, Bob Costas and Pat Riley. Jordan drawing the double team, able to get it to Livingston. Cliff Livingston going glass for his first field goal. And the Lakers lead by two. And Cliff Levingston, who's had an up and down season with Chicago. Phil Jackson trying to get a feel for what the best way to play him is. But after these first two games, most happy about the way he's played worthy at the defensive end. Phil Jackson so pleased with his spirited play, his energy. Here's Tigor, and that was deflected short by Jordan. So Michael returning the favor. Will repay that time. Cartwright feeling for Perkins, and he felt him on that bump, but able to hit. Cartwright's first field goal, and he's tied the game at 33. Armstrong with the light pressure on Drew. Green, Perkins, Worthy up front. Drew and Teagle in the backcourt. Magic Johnson receiving a rest. Perkins, Green. And the Lakers lead at 35-33. In the Portland series, as soon as the Lakers got back to the foam, it seemed, it seemed to just rejuvenate A.C. Green. He just comes alive in this building, particularly on the offensive boards. A.C. came up strong in that sixth game to wrap up the series against Portland. Grant, yes, beautiful move 
by Horace Grant, who is now six for eight for 12 points. The Bulls and Lakers tied at 35. Worthy goes to the hook against Levingston. Now George met on the switch. Perkins defending against him. And it will be Laker ball. Michael Jordan is 5 for 12 for his 11 points. Timeout has been called by the Lakers. 6 for he won remaining in the second. The scene has shifted to Magic's kingdom as we welcome you back. The foreman, Inglewood, California. Capacity crowd, 17505 on hand. And both clubs burning it up. In game two in Chicago, the Bulls shot a NBA Finals record 61 and 7 tenths percent. They hit 50 of 81 from the field. In that blistering third quarter, they connected on 17 of 20, and both clubs have shot well here. Uh, in the first half, Chicago, as you saw, at 57%. The Lakers at 15 for 22. They are just under 70% for the half. And again, one statistic that, that keeps jumping out at you. After the first two games, 30 more free throw attempts for the Lakers. In this game so far, nine for the Lakers, zero for the Bulls. Magic Johnson back on the floor in the backcourt with Terry Teagle. It will be Laker ball with eight on the shot clock. Up front, Perkins, Worthy, and Devons. Unusual to see Bill Cartwright out above the top of the three-point circle, pressuring Sam Perkins, who is acting as the point guard. Devons battling his way against Pippen, and then hits. Lottie Devons showing the outside touch as Phil Jackson has gone back to the matchup of uh, the smaller player, Scotty Pippen, who goes six-seven against Lottie Devons, who goes seven foot one. The foul call on Bill Cartwright. That is three on Cartwright. Cartwright using the free arm, left arm to hold Divots off. A little shove right at the end, and a nice acting job by Vladi after the ball is entered to miss the bill. The body trying to move him out by Divots. Cartwright trying to clear him off his body with that left elbow. And Phil Jackson taking out Cartwright, who just collected his third, and he's going with the rookie from North Carolina, a native of Los Angeles, Scott Williams, who has played well during the playoffs. Bulls trapping Magic, who was able to get it across the midcourt line. Perkin! Oh, what a move! Lakers lead at 39-35. Williams up front now with Pippen and Levingston, Jordan and Armstrong at the guard. Scott Williams threw the foul. Perkins is the main post-up guy for Los Angeles. He wants to come into the middle of the floor to his right shoulder, but they keep forcing him baseline, shows it, and then gives a little up and under move. Concentration excellent at all times, keeping his eyes on that target. Sam Perkins called for the foul, his first. And Scott Williams for the line. As you saw, the Lakers have been going to the foul line frequently, and the Bulls have not. Phil Jackson has been making that point at every opportunity. It's a matter of how many times you're going to put the ball down in the post. Keep in mind, the Lakers have so many more post-up players than the Bulls do. Are you saying the disparity is understandable? I'm saying that uh, L.A. is in trouble right now with yes. this guy handling against Michael. And it is a backcourt 10-second violation. Devots handles the ball well, but you do not want Vladi one-on-one -on -one with Magic Johnson as he's bouncing the ball. I was trying to get it in a little bit sooner, but you knew he was having big problems when Michael decided to stay with him. Vladi was hoping he would run away and go somewhere else, but he didn't disappear. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Lakers with a three-point lead. Pippen off the stutter step. Yes. Scotty Pippen 
with his third bucket. He has six. Again, pressure by the Bulls. And now they drop back as Magic is able to handle it. And Pippen now the defender putting the pressure on Magic, which was the turning point in game two. Magic spinning away. And here come the Bulls on the run. Pippen looking for someone. Couldn't find anyone. Oh, what a play by Levingston to break it up. But it will be Laker ball. The Bulls' defense is excellent. Their traps are aggressive. But probably more importantly is the way that they recover defensively. Here, the Lakers make a pretty good recovery themselves with Tigo breaking up the fast break opportunity. Both teams very good in transition defense. Worthy for three. Perkins missed the tip. And the Bulls back to the offense. Levingston, yes. A rare jump shot opportunity by Levingston. And he has had himself a very nice first half offensively. Hit on a sweeping shot and now the jumper. And, and you can see the confidence that Michael Jordan has built in Levingston. Two touch steal right there by Chicago. Jordan twice in a row dishing to Levingston for scores. And Michael Jordan converts. He has 13. The Bulls lead by three. Good run here by Chicago. Seven unanswered. The Lakers want to talk it over with 3.39 remaining. In the second quarter, it is called a 20-second timeout. They are so quick and they cover so much ground, the Bulls, that they produce a large number of turnovers. But it's, it's nothing that should surprise you. This has happened the entire season. Fourth best in the league this year, coming up with steals and easy points. Bulls by three, with three and a half left, first half. Nice setup. Devots was stopped. Again, Levingston getting a piece of it. Here comes Pippen, had it knocked away, and a kickball being indicated. Bill Oaks with the call. Once again, the transition defense stopping a potential fast break score. Divac wide open for the layup, but then Levingston from behind gets a piece. Quickness to the ball. Transition defense, a little boot to help out. Yes, and on that uh, boot, the Bulls able to get it back, and Williams was hit. Looked like he got jammed in the shoulder. He has had shoulder problems. Foul called on Divac is first. In fact, uh, Scott Williams had the shoulder pop out, we're told, when he was sleeping. The other night, very active uh, dreamer, Scott Williams. Williams a little bit smaller, but quicker in the whole area, giving Divac a little bit of a problem there, making a quick move rather than the part right, back down, back down, contact, get him off your move. Scott Williams will require shoulder surgery following the season. Scott two out of four from the foul line. The Bulls 43, Lakers 39, eight consecutive points by Chicago to take the lead as we come up on three minutes remaining in the first half. Magic backing Pippen and then spinning rejected emphatically by Levingston. The steal by Devons. It's a three on two. Worthy with the one on one move. Yes. Bulls 43 and the Lakers 41. Crowd with the chant of defense. Cliff Levingston has come off the bench and has provided a spark, both defensively and offensively. Backdoor pass attempted, broke it up. Last touch by the Lakers. It will be Chicago ball. They'll have only two on the shot clock, and they'll throw it in following the timeout. We'll be back in a moment. In his ninth year out of Wichita State, Cliff Levingston, one-time Detroit Piston, one-time Atlanta Hawk, I recall, Mike. A, a most valuable Hawk coming off the bench behind Dominique Wilkins, playing both sides of the floor. Noted for his hustle, aggressive play, and defense. Levingston on the baseline rotation, just where the Bulls want to bring him. Rewarded at the other end, knocking out the jumper. Four points, two block shots for the quick leaping. Cliff Levingston. Last year came an overweight in Atlanta. Never got going. And then signed as a free agent by the Bulls. 24 second violation. Bulls lead by two. 43 41. 
Laker ball with 2.20 remaining in this first half. And just then, James Worthy stayed in the backcourt, set a little screen to try and get Pippen off Magic and free him up. Worthy freed up. Perkins. Sam Perkins ties the game at 43. The high point men, Magic and Worthy, 12 apiece. Jordan, 13. Grant has 12. Scott Williams. And back up the Lakers. Rare opportunity to run, but the Bulls got back. Scott pumping. Byron Scott continues to have his difficulties. The Bulls now on the run. Pippen sweeping in, and he was blocked. Foul called on Devon. I think the shot at the other end of the floor by Byron Scott was just frustration. He said, look, I've got to try and get myself going, get into this thing. He could have crossed the ball over to the other side of the floor to an open teammate. Instead, he decided to pull up and try and get it go himself. He's got a big defender coming after him, a good challenge that time by Scott Williams. The frustration is setting in little by little. And a 36 remaining in this first half. Scotty Pippen who has averaged 22 a game in the playoffs, shooting over 50% in his fourth year out of Central Arkansas. And year by year, he has improved in every offensive and defensive category. See that 20-point total game, too, but that only told part of the story because he did it defensively against Magic Johnson, taking over to Michael Jordan. Bulls have a one-point lead. Game three of the best of seven NBA Finals. Series tied at one. Bulls playing Magic very well. You saw Pippen get the help. And three Bulls go to the glass. That time the Lakers got the ball to the weak side, but it came a little bit late. They need to get it over to the other side of the floor. Start at one side, get it over to the other side, make the Bulls' defense react. Scott off the steal. Finds Worthy. Beautifully done by Byron Scott. He drew Michael Jordan to him, and he had an open man in James Worthy. Lakers 45, the Bulls 44. Jordan in the middle of the floor, trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, create, try and hit the shooter in the corner for a three. Armstrong. And here come the Lakers. Again on the run. Worthy fouled by Pippen. The rotation by L.A. producing the fast break opportunity. And then Scott, who used to be a point guard in college, makes the play by hitting Worthy. Magic likes the idea that they get the transition game going. His favorite target, James Worthy at the end. And Pippen upset had something to say to the officials. Called for a technical foul. Magic Johnson converting the tee. Lakers lead it 46-44 and a Worthy to the free throw line. As soon as the technical was called, Michael Jordan went over to Pippen, grabbed him, walked him away, started talking to him, explaining, settle down, relax. Let's not get these officials turned against any team versus the other. Crowd reacting to the, the rare miss tonight by Worthy in his first free throw appearance. He is 7 for 11 from the field. James Worthy coming up big once again. He has 15. He's come back strong following the ankle injury. Same spread play. This time, though, Scotty Pippen's the guy to make the play or make the pass. And Darryl Garrison with the indication. Loose ball foul on Devos. That is his third foul. 18 seconds remaining. In this first half, A.C. Green will check in, replacing Lottie Devots, who departs with nine and three personal. So both Devots and Cartwright sitting down with three. And Grant to the foul line with the Lakers over the limit. Horace Grant hitting on his first foul shot opportunity. Levingston returning. Replacing Scott Williams, Horace Grant. 
with the prescription goggles once again. He had discard, discarded the uh, goggles, he said, uh, during the playoff series against the Knicks. Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley purposely knocking them off. The same thing happened in the series against the Sixers. So uh, he felt the Pistons would do the same, and he took them off, put them back on for the NBA final. And he has shot very well. Byron Scott, final seconds of the half, and a foul being called on the Lakers. Worthy reaching in with four seconds to go in the first half. Now they change the call. Byron Scott now picks it up. I'm sure if the Lakers would have had their choice, they would have run the clock down and taken the last shot of the half. But because the Bulls went into their full court pressing, trapping defense, a hurried shot takes place, the miss, and as a result, the Bulls go to the line for two free throws. And Michael Jordan on the line for the first time. Jordan six for 13. He has 13 points. And the playoffs. Averaging better than 31 per game. That is the best in the NBA. Michael leading the NBA in scoring for the fifth straight season. That is only two away from the record held by Wilt Chamberlain. The Bulls by one. Four seconds remaining in the half. Worthy. Good first half here at the Forum in Englewood. The high point man, James Worthy with 15. Magic Johnson with 13. Michael Jordan with 15. And Horace Grant with 14. The Chicago Bulls, 48. And the Los Angeles Lakers, 47. As we head to halftime, Lakers and the Bulls headed back to the locker room. Here is that last second attempt from downtown by James Worthy, just off to the left side. Bob Costas and Pat Riley coming up at halftime. The Bulls by one in game three of the NBA Championship Series. Back at the forum, Marv Albert, along with Mike Fratello, Ahmad Rashad, Steve Jones, as we look at the close-up statistics in the first half, again, both clubs shot well. 54% by the Bulls and the Lakers. And this, the uh, main difference, the Bulls crunching the Lakers off the boards. Big difference in the rebounds, but also big difference in turnovers. 10-4, 10 turnovers for the Bulls. As a result, most games, the Bulls, in the first two games, 11 more shots a game for the Bulls. Right now, 37 shot attempts for each team because of the difference in turnovers. Lakers open up with Patrick Johnson, Byron Scott in the backcourt. Lottie Devots playing with three along with James Worthy and Sam Perkins. Devots getting inside. He now has 11. And the Lakers lead it by one. It's been close throughout and one stretch. Chicago led by four. At one point, Los Angeles had a five-point lead. Jordan off the double team, got it back out. Pippen, yes. Bulls 50 and the Lakers 49. And Scottie Pippen is hitting the jumper. He now has nine. That time, the Lakers, after the double team, tried to half rotate. They pretended they were going to rotate to Pippen, then went back to their own men. Pippen knocked it out. What a save by Pippen. Jordan. Jordan on the rebound. It is so rare to see Jordan on the drive, not A, score, or B, get fouled. So he got the rebound. And a timeout called. It's a 20-second timeout taken by the Lakers. Well, after the great save takes place by Pippen, what happens is Michael comes up with the ball. He heads to the basket at the other end. But now, as he starts to take off, Perkins moves into his body. He doesn't quite have the lift and not enough extension there to finish it off. So he just kind of hustles back on the floor and says, I'll do it this way. The Chicago Bulls in game two Wednesday night at Chicago Stadium shot an NBA Finals record 61 and 7 tenths percent. They hit 50 out of 81. And both clubs have 
shot exceptionally well here tonight. Michael Jordan with 17. He's 7 for 15 from the field. Magic Johnson, 4 out of 6 for his 13. Worthy, the high man for the Lakers with 15. Jordan with 17. Grant with 14. Pacing the Bulls. Perkins putting the move on Cartwright. Stepped away, perhaps not looking to pick up number four. One point lead by Chicago with a minute and 40 gone by in the third. Cartwright and Worthy on the rebound. That's the long arm of Sam Perkins, the extension challenging the shot that's throwing Bill Cartwright off just a little bit right now. Magic posting. Oh, what a pass for Divac. And Divac made the baseline cut that time a little bit sooner than he had been doing it. He caught the Bulls' defense by surprise. Los Angeles Lakers by one. Good recovery by Divac, and it forced the turnover. Well, you notice as soon as the Lakers seem to have a break, there's four red shirts back. Excellent transition defense. Magic. Packs it on the wing was open. Shot clock at 10. Packs it guarded by Johnson. Has to unleash. He forced it. He thought he was fouled. 24 second violation. John Paxson arguing with the outside official Bill Oakes looking for a hack and did not get the call. Paxson basically saying just because this was a launch I had to get it up at the last second. If I get fouled, call the foul. He feels it right there on his right arm. Scott made contact. That's what he's asking for. Beautiful backdoor pass. Devots from Johnson. Lakers with a three-point advantage. The Lakers used that same back pick play from the top of the circle fouling area twice in game two, scored both times there as well. Turnovers have been hurting the Bulls. They have now committed 13 Lakers with only six. Scott spotting up. Byron Scott now 0 for 4. The Chicago Bulls in possession. They are trailing by three. Jordan with the step and was forced to pop it back out. And Pippen run into by Worthy. Pippen faking, then holding and faking again, and he drew the foul. Let's go back a moment ago to one of the favorite plays the Lakers like to use only two or three times. A back pick right there. Small man Scott on big man. The lob over the top by Magic, and then the receiver who has excellent hands able to convert. Scotty Pippen has hit two of three from the line. He is a 70% free throw shooter. This series resumes Sunday night, game four here in Los Angeles. That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's four out here on the West Coast. Please note that change in time. And then game five at the forum on Wednesday at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Lakers with a one-point lead. Four minutes gone by in the third. Crowd looking for a foul on Pippen, who plays Magic aggressively. What a pass! Perkins converting to give the Lakers a 57-54 lead. And Phil Jackson calling for time. I think Phil Jackson sees that they're ready for the way they've been playing. Jordan now on Divots. Lakers are go, go to it right away. And then the other two Laker players went to the open areas on the floor. Interior passing. Small man on big. Keep your head turned to the lane. The double team of Worthy and Perkins versus Cartwright is too much. Excellent interior passing. First one, second one to finish off the play. They're in the correct position, attacking Jordan, who's matched up against Devon. And this crowd raising its intensity. Uh, they've been quiet 
right throughout the first half. It's almost as if this crowd was sitting there saying, wait a minute, these Bulls are going to go away. They're not for real. They are for real. The crowd needs to get into the game and help the Lakers here at home. Lakers have a three-point edge. Magic Johnson guarding John Paxson now. And a loose ball foul call. Grant picks up his first. Phil Jackson in his second year as head coach of the Chicago Bulls, 45 years old. He was a combination philosophy, psychology, and religion major at North Dakota where he played for Bill Fitch, who is now the head coach of the New Jersey Nets. d off the spin. Same matchup in game two, except the Lakers didn't go to it on a consistent basis. There's the second time in a row this evening. Perkins with the rejection. Lakers on a roll. They lead by five. Magic Johnson. Yes. Decision. They're going down in the hole. Make Jordan play Divac one on one. It's a mismatch. Too big, too strong. Backs him down. But the key for the Lakers is if they pick up their intensity at the defensive end, make things happen with the defense as Perkins does. There's no question then at the offensive end of the floor, the Magic Man will take over and make things happen. The crowd back into it again at the forum. The excitement back in the air. The Lakers love it. Vlade Divac has hit four for four for the field here in this third quarter. Do you look for an adjustment by Phil Jackson? Perhaps you go back to your original matchups, put Jordan back on Magic Man. It is a backcourt violation. So the Lakers take possession in front court. Defensive pressure, defensive intensity, more concentration, all the things the staff talked about for the Lakers today. Chicago only two for eight from the field in the third. Lakers seven for nine in the third quarter. And the matchup again. Grant goes back on Divac as Jordan goes back to Magic. Nice pass. And the foul is called. Beautiful whip pass. Perkins hitting the floor. Pippen called for his third foul. The crowd kind of reacting to game two where the flagrant foul was called against the Lakers. This one on the cut, just a late rotation, takes the legs out, Sam goes down hard. Excellent interior passing by this Laker team. They look for one another, and it's really by both teams. You're talking about the players up front all looking for one another, knowing where they're going to be, and then the biggest thing, being able to execute, make the pass. Sam Perkins, 82%, free throw shooter. Lakers in the midst of a 13-2 run. Stacy King now checking in, replacing Bill Cartwright. Let's go over to Ahmad. Well, Marv, during that last time out, Phil Jackson was very concerned about his offense, thought Michael Jordan was trying to do a little bit too much. They wanted to try to get Cartwright, who has just gone to the bench, get more involved. They want to use Michael more as a decoy and try to kick it out to Scottie Pippen. All right, Ahmad. I would think forget about using Michael Jordan as a decoy. He uh, better begin to light it up. Well, this one will get away. Pippen for three. Lakers with a 63-54 lead in the midst of a 14-2 run. Jordan with the steal. And here's Jordan. Rebounded by Magic. Held by King. Stacey King grabbing for the shorts of Magic Johnson. Stacey King saving a transition score versus the Lakers. Magic busting out. King says, wait a minute, get back here. Let me grab that jersey and hang on. Stacey King has not seen much action during the course of the playoffs, making his first appearance of this game in his second year out of Oklahoma, and now guarding Perkins, who whips by him. 
The, the double team was coming from the baseline that time. Perkins was able to turn it and get to the middle of the floor. Uncontested shot. 16-2 burst by the Lakers. Paxson passed up the three. Can't hit the two. Jordan on the recovery. And King could not hold on, but it was batted out by Johnson. It will be Chicago ball. They have 20 on the 24, 5-10 remaining. In the third quarter, the Lakers lead it by 11. The Bulls only 2 for 11 this quarter. Here's Pippen, make it 2 for 12. Just looking a little bit like the way game two started to open up at the stadium. Around a three to five point lead for the Bulls. Then midway through that third quarter, they exploded to the big lead. What a pass! Magic Johnson combining with Bloody Divas. And Phil Jackson wants to talk it over again. The Lakers with an 18-2 run now lead the Bulls by 13 points with 4.46 to go in the third. Two great ones digging in, concentrating, one on offense, one on defense, and then at the last second, the hook pass by Magic, finding Divots cutting under the basket. Lottie Divots, a major factor in this Laker third quarter explosion. Nine for 12 overall. He's hit five for five in the third. Michael Jordan has been off his game to this point. Patrick Johnson has picked it up. He has 15 points along with nine assists. Paxson getting in, and that ends the 12-0 run by the Lakers. Seems like a simple little play, a little guard, guard, brush screen, but when you don't communicate on defense, it winds up being two points a layup. Oh, a guard, guard, brush screen. Yeah. I was going to uh, use the same terminology. Again, Divots, who has hit six for six in the third. Prior to that guard, guard, brush screen, Chicago had missed nine consecutive shots. Lakers 69, the Bulls 56. Lakers want a tie-up, but the foul has been called. It's on Magic. Divac, a big, skilled player. Has the ability to face up, knock him out. Halfway in between a center and power forward with a little bit of small forward in him as well. Stacy King to the line the first time. It has been a rocky season for Stacy. Earlier upset about his lack of playing time. Boycotted a practice. His extra weight did not delight the coaching staff. Number one draft pick last season. Sixth selection overall. A lot of talent there. Stacy in his second year out of Oklahoma getting the playing time here this evening. Goals to the trap. Perkins back to help. Just under four minutes remaining in the third. Lakers lead it by 11. Just getting set up now with eight seconds on the 24-second clock. Magic. He had a fling it and a foul. Grant coming over the top of Perkins. Lakers got a break on that sequence that was out of sync. But Horace Grant called for his second. And that's the exact reason why players launch up some bad shots because you got to get it up there to give your team a second chance you never know what's going to happen it just might fall in your hands sam perkins two for two from the free throw line sam one of the laker heroes in the victory in chicago and in, in game number one Hit the shot from downtown, and Michael Jordan not able to hit. Jordan said after the game, the wrong guy from North Carolina converted the shot. Lakers 70, and the Bulls 58. Paxson lost Magic momentarily off the screen. Scott switches off. King given the room. Grant drawing the double team. Paxson shooting. And 
he got the friendly roll. John Paxson has eight points. Lakers 70 and the Bulls 60. Good double team. And it was kicked out by the Bulls. Magic trapped by the combination of Jordan and Pippen. Those are two tough guys to get trapped by. Aggressive, great hands, long arms. And is that an inadvertent whistle or a timeout? Timeout has been taken. The play continued, but uh, the timeout taken, they may have to adjust the shot clock with 2.58 remaining. In the third quarter, the Lakers have a 10-point lead. They have just changed the, the shot clock. Exactly three minutes left in the third, and now they are saying it is a full timeout. High point out of the game, Vladi Divac, who has come on strong here in the third, now has 21. He's hit on 10 out of uh, 13. Chicago Bulls in game two on Wednesday, 17 for 20 from the field. But a different story tonight, only four out of 14. Michael Jordan. High man with 17. Horace Grant with 14. Michael has been very quiet, though, here in the third. Following game two, all that uh, people were talking about was that incredible shot by Michael in traffic. It will go down as one of the classics, uh, certainly among Michael's uh, top 10, perhaps uh, top five. Going to the left hand and then able to hit. And earlier I talked about that shot with Michael Jordan. It was something that just happened instantaneously. I didn't think about it. It was more or less creativity uh, while I was doing my job. Um, but it was one of those exciting plays that a lot of people got excited over. And, that, and that's some of the enjoyment that I get out of playing the game, that uh, people can have the same type of excitement that I have going through it. Where would you rate it? Is it a Michael Jordan top 10, top 5? I would have to say it's in the top 10. Uh, looking back at it and, and uh, the, the decision that I made at that particular time to change my shot and, and still have the concentration to make it at those times uh, is incredible. Well, he begrudgingly put it in the top ten. Play is resumed with the Lakers up by ten. Worthy. Perkins. Sam Perkins with the finger roll rebound. Providing the Lakers with a 12-point lead. Grant hit by Devots. Fourth foul on Vladi Divac. This is game three of the best of seven NBA Finals. Series tied at one. Game four here in L.A. Sunday night starting at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Well, magic with some words for Vladi Divac. We have seen that uh, from time to time. But Vladi has such a great attitude. He says, Magic is just trying to help me. I've become such a much better player this season than past years. He's willing to accept it. That's the key to the whole thing. At times, according to Magic Johnson, and we talked about this extensively with uh, Magic the other day, he feels that Vladi's head goes out of the ball game, loses the concentration, and he's just trying to get him back into it. Is that European mentality where... The guys don't play with the same intensity, game in, game out? Uh, they don't play with the same intensity over the extended minutes that are required in the NBA. The other thing is, let's uh, maybe uh, give some uh, portion of that to the language barrier problem. Maybe he's not quite sure everything that's being said or going on in the timeouts in the huddles. Pippen off the steal. And the foul given. Perkins collecting his second. Lakers with a 72-62 lead. Turning it on here in the third. At one point, Chicago missed nine consecutive shots. An 18-2 run. Got it going. Here's Pippen. Stopped by Green. A.C. Green with the rejection. Magic. 
Went to the baby hook. Rebounded by Pippen. Paxson spotting up from downtown. And Magic Johnson able to strip Horace Grant. Perkins posting Williams. Won't count. Traveling. Violation. So Scott Williams, who was reinserted, now guarding Sam Perkins. It's such a fine line when you're taking those long strides, but taking them in slow motion, whether or not it's a travel or whether the ball's released first. Here's Jordan. It has not been a third quarter for Michael Jordan. Pippen on the steal. Jordan. And the foul indicated. You know, it was, a, it was in the third quarter in game two when the Bulls made their big run that they basically turned Michael Jordan back into the point guard running the team on a regular basis, put the ball in his hands in the middle of the floor, sent the other players to the wing, and that's where Michael hit Paxson for spot-up jumpers, was able to go on his own, eventually knocked out 13 straight field goal attempts, but Michael moving over to the point guard position was part of that big explosion by the Bulls. Michael in the third quarter tonight, only one for five from the floor. Overall, seven for 18. Game one, 36 points, 12 assists. Game two, he led that uh, third quarter surge. Overall hit 15 of 18. Putting on a prime time show with 33 points. Williams pressing Perkins. Lakers have an eight-point lead with just under one minute left in the third. Green. And the ball goes to Chicago. A.C. Green, a pretty good face-up shooter from the top of the circle over the years in the NBA, and also in that mid-range area from the corner, struggling the last two games. Jordan pounding the ball, and then released to Pippen. Michael off the hard dribble, looks for the explosion. Check the clock, four on the 24. Williams gets it back out. What happened that time, Michael looked up at the overhead clock, looking for the 24-second clock, couldn't find it, then shifted his eyes down to the other end to locate the 24-second clock. That's time remaining in the quarter. Pippen with the step and the bucket. Beautiful move by Scotty Pippen. Eight and four ten seconds to go. In the third, Perkins could not find anyone. Final seconds of the third. Green cut off by Grant. Worthy gets it off. The Bulls conclude the third with an 8-2 run. Lakers with a 72-66 lead. Vladi Divac with 12 of his 21 in the third. We head to the fourth at the four. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. We welcome you back to the Forum in Inglewood, California. Better than 17,000 on hand. The toughest ticket in town. Game three of the best of seven. The Los Angeles Lakers outscoring the Chicago Bulls 25-18 in the third. Good run by the Bulls late to close it up. And the reason for that enormous third quarter by Los Angeles, the play of Lottie Divots. And you can see the uh, mismatch thus far tonight at the center position, although Cartwright has not necessarily gone up against Devots. Earlier with Scottie Pippen and Phil Jackson switched off to uh, Horace Grant and Scott Williams. Devots overall 10 for 13 and hit 6 of 6 from the floor in the third. Well, the Bulls also had Michael Jordan playing Devots down there for a while, and you say, well, what's the best way to play him? How come they don't keep Cartwright on him all the time? The problem is who plays Perkins if Cartwright matches up with Devots? Perkins is too big and strong for Grant. Michael Jordan going to the left hand, yes. No, it won't count. The outside official. Bill Oaks with the call. Joe Crawford was about to say yes, 
and the foul. But the outside official had the better look, and he's called for the push-off. The foul called on Jordan, his second. The key there is whether or not the right arm was extended away from Michael's body enough to push the defensive player away. That's a decision the official made, called the offensive foul, felt he used it to get the shot off. Without the use of it, he wouldn't have gotten off. Crowd reacting to the aggressive play of Scott Williams, but Perkins able to back him down, and the Lakers lead 74-66. Jordan only one for seven, four points in the third, now being guarded by Teagle. Jordan dumped it off, and Williams was fouled. Keep an eye on the free arm, not the left hand, but the right arm as he starts to elevate and, and deliver the ball with his left hand. The right arm, right there, pushes off to keep the defender away from the block shot. Good call by Bill Oak. Scott Williams to the line. He was hit by A.C. Green. At one point, the Lakers led by 13. They led 67-54. At one stretch in the first half, Chicago led by four. In the third quarter, the Bulls missed nine consecutive shots. Lakers went on an 18-2 run. And the Lakers now lead 74-68. Evots played by Grant. Pippen over to help. Green. Call against AC Green. Offensive foul. When the ball goes down into the hole, you'll see Divac dribble away from the basket. He's trying to extend the Bulls' defense to then make the passing angles easier to his other teammates who cut into the open areas. Hodges, quick spot up by Craig Hodges. Craig, the three-point specialist, that time hitting from two, his first field goal, and the Bulls have moved within four. Perkins, Lakers looking for a foul. One of those Jordan blocks from behind the post player's head as Hodges tries to make it two in a row, but misses. Craig Hodges with the quick release. Magic backing his way. AC Green controlling and drew the foul. He had three opportunities off the offensive glass. Williams picked up the call. Timeout has been taken. We'll be right back. at the Lakers shooting in the fourth quarter. They have struggled with five for 14 in game one. In game two, only six for 23, and they've opened up only one out of four over the first two minutes. Since that Laker 13-point lead, the Bulls coming on strong at the end of the third have outscored the Lakers 16 to 7. AC Green on the line as we resume. So the Bulls, despite the good play by the Lakers uh, in the third have been allowed to hang around. It is only a four-point game. As you look at those fourth-quarter shooting percentages, it might be uh, the effects of the full pressure, the relentless pressure by the Chicago Bulls. A lot of these players for the Lakers were used to all year running down the floor and let Magic bring it down and get us going. Now they're all extended all over the floor, having to do things they haven't been used to doing. They may not be quite in uh, the shape that they need to be for this type of pressure. AC Green only a 73% free throw shooter, missed both. Hodges able to keep it alive. Hodges. The officials check it out. And Daryl Garrison says Chicago ball. The two officials checked with one another. Garrison looked outside to Oates. Oates back to Garrison. Garrison said, I have it. 
Off Divac's hands, last. Bulls have been able to hang around despite the fact that to this point it has been a subpar offensive effort by Michael Jordan. And the foul on the Lakers. It's on Tigo. Michael Jordan has played all but one minute of tonight's game. And he has only one field goal to show over the last 17 minutes and 42 seconds. So we're saying that right now he's at 37 and a half minutes for the game. He played 40 and 36 respectively in games one and two. This will be his high game in minutes by the end of the evening. Michael is only seven for 19. But as the opposition knows, always dangerous down the stretch. Cartwright, yes. So the Bulls have now come within two. That's Jordan starting the whole thing by having the ball in the middle of the floor and then creating for his teammates. He's so hard to play because you have to come and double him with the wing. That leaves someone open in the corner or on the baseline. The block by Livingston once again. That is his third for the game. Beautiful look away. Jordan for Pippen. And the game is tied at 74. The Chicago Bulls have come roaring back. Lakers requesting the timeout with eight minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the third. Perkins with the left hand flip turned back by Levingston. And back down court the look away from Jordan to Pippen. A 20 to 7 run by Chicago to tie it. Ahmad Rashad back here at the forum. And during that last timeout, Phil Jackson said he's going to have to try to go with the regulars. He's going to try to bring Bill Cartwright back in momentarily. What they think is Magic Johnson is time. They're going to try to wear him down with Michael Jordan's young legs. Now it is Steve Jones. All right, Ahmad, uh, those old legs of Magic Johnson need to get some movement. They told him that they want to go strong to the hoop. They want to make the extra pass as the Lakers have become stagnant at the offensive end. Over to you, Mark. All right, Steve, Lakers and Bulls tied at 74, eight and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Shot clock at six. Magic. Lakers, 76, and the Bulls, 74. Magic Johnson has 17 points, along with nine rebound, uh, six rebounds, nine assists. Cartwright has returned. Cartwright up front with Pippen and Levingston. Jordan and Hodges in the backcourt. Levingston getting inside, and he's tied the game at 76. Cliff Levingston has come on in each game and done exactly what they need. Play tough defense, rebound for him on the glass, keep the ball alive, and then when they give him the ball, he's making the most of the scoring opportunities. Levingston now matched with Worthy. Here's Scott, who has been quiet. He is now old for five. Byron Scott has struggled throughout the series. 22-9 run by Chicago. Cartwright with a good fake, and then Perkins recovered. It will be Los Angeles ball. Patrick Johnson, Byron Scott in the backcourt. Sam Perkins, James Worthy, and Velotti Divac up front. Divac off the turnover. Here comes Jordan with the ball in his hands in the middle of the floor. The double team on Pippen preventing the shot. Caught right, bottled up and fouled. Devots collecting his fifth. Devots trying to pull the same move defensively at this end that happened to him at the other end. Get that hand in there for the swipe before Cartwright can get it up. Bill has a habit of bringing the ball up in front of the defender's waist area, a good area to reach in and get that deflection. In previous seasons, Bill Cartwright has been a solid free throw shooter, but this year at a career low, 69%. He says his mechanics have been abnormally bad because he hasn't gone to the line as often as in past years. Greg Hodges departs for John Paxson. 
And Divac picking up his fifth foul is very important because, as we've mentioned in the game, he's a skilled player, and the way they're doubling and trapping Magic, it's been Divac who's had to bring it up a number of times. Divac who has made the key pass or catch at the offensive end of the floor. Now the ball's in A.C. Green's hands instead of a Divac far from the basket. Divac sitting down as Green has come on. Bulls by two. Here's Perkins. He recovers. Lakers and Bulls tied at 78. Six minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the fourth. Jordan regrouping and then fires. Yes. And that is his first field goal in quite a spell. He now has 21 points. Well, you mentioned Jordan was regrouping. He pulled back with his dribble. That was to try and expose an illegal defense he thought was there. Then he decided to make his move to steal right there. Pippen on the break. Pippen. Oh, what a move by Scotty Pippen. That was a Tim Hardaway move. He did it with the dribble drive, and the Bulls lead 82-78. Foul call on Jordan, his third. Just then, Mike Dunleavy called out three down to Magic as he came up the floor. Phil Jackson, watching the call, turned to the bench and said three down so they could make their defensive call, perhaps Perhaps a result of the spy cam yes. picking up the three down call. Spy cam that uh, we uncovered the other day. Here's Magic going for the stuff. And he took Cartwright with him. The foul called on Jordan. That is his fourth. When Jordan turns Magic baseline, he's hoping that his teammate is there sooner than later. That time, Bill Cartwright, too late to get there on the rotation. Michael Jordan going up against Magic Johnson in this series has been in foul trouble on a number of occasions. Magic now six for six from the line. Lakers hurting at the line, only 11 for 19. The Bulls 82, the Lakers 80. As we come up on five minutes remaining in the fourth, Jordan only two for eight from the field in the second half. Here is Michael, rebounded by Levingston. Cliff Levingston continues to sparkle. Eight points, three blocked shots. Bulls have a four-point lead. Worthy. Bulls thought that Worthy should have been called for the charge as Levingston went down. Worthy has 17. Two-point Chicago lead. Jordan again coming up short. Worthy. Yes. Lakers and Bulls tied at 84. And Chicago calls for time with 4 18 remaining in the fourth quarter. Jordan has had a tough time knocking down shots here in the game. But Cliff Levingston, because of the ability of Michael Jordan to break the defense down and force rotations, leaves Levingston wide open on the glass to do the thing he does best, offensive rebound. Keep an eye on Michael's foot as he drives baseline. What are you looking at? He's out of bounds. Mike, this may be in the category of a fine second guess, but has uh, Phil Jackson gone with Michael Jordan too much? Tonight he's played all but uh, one minute. He's uh, sitting him down right here. And uh, he's also had to go up defensively against Magic Johnson. Meanwhile, Scotty Pippen with a brilliant drive. He has 19. The Bulls take an 86 84 lead. Just under four remaining in this fourth quarter. 
Foul called up high. That's four on Pippen. Well, because of the number of minutes that he's played up to this point and the fact that there may have been some fatigue setting in, that's why he was coming up short on a lot of the shots. This is a difficult time to have to sit Michael Jordan down. Even if it's only for a minute, it's still one of those precious minutes down the stretch of the game. Jordan only two for nine from the field in the second half. Worthy delivers to Devos. Good play by Bryant, who interfered with the shot. He bothered Devos. Just the rotation and the challenge of the shot threw him off enough to miss an open layup. Bowles with a two-point lead. And they are buying time with Michael Jordan on the bench. Grant. Again, strong to the board. Combination of Livingston and Pippen. How many coaches would have the courage to sit Michael Jordan down in a two-point game or a tie ball game with four minutes to go and then have the team respond and go up four? Livingston receiving credit for that tip. The outside official, Joe Crawford, with the call. It's on Pippen. That is his fifth. Here comes Jordan making his return. Michael Jordan has four personal fouls. Lottie Devots playing with five. That is the fifth team foul. Charged to Chicago over the foul limit. And Magic Johnson to the line. Levingston departs. A terrific effort by Cliff Levingston. He was five for five from the field. Three rebounds, three blocked shots. 20 points for Magic. The Bulls lead by three with 2.54 remaining in the fourth. Oh. Magic throwing a brick. Lakers struggling from the free throw line this evening. All those easy points that they had in game one from the foul line, the three-point line, they're not there this evening. Devots jumping out. Devots creating havoc, but it will be Chicago ball with only five on the 24. Watch for the flash to the top of the circle by Grant, and then a little backdoor move or back pick on Paxson for the shot in the corner. Perkins created that steal. Worthy lost it. And a break for the ball. Worthy trying to go in the air. To, the intention was good to pass off. Just lost control of the ball as he went up. Two minutes, 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The Bulls with an 88-85 lead. They come from behind. They were down by as many as 13 off a sensational shooting third quarter by the Lakers. Paxson through the foul. Will it count? No. A non-shooting call against Magic Johnson. You need to determine whether or not Paxton is in the act of shooting. The ball fate to get Magic up. The foul takes place before he's in the act of shooting. Magic came down on Paxton before Paxton was able to get that ball up to start the shot. A good call by Darrell Garrison. And a timeout called with 2.10 remaining in the fourth. It is a gorgeous 68 degree day in Southern California indoors at the Forum in Inglewood. Crowd trying to get the home club going. Bulls and Lakers, two timeouts remaining. The next foul for the Lakers will put them over the limit. The Bulls already are. It is Chicago ball. They lead it by three. Just under two minutes remaining in the fourth. Grant had it knocked away by Perkins. Magic spinning in. The Chicago lead is one. Magic figuring out which way the rotation was coming from. He saw he had the opening, the quickest spin move we've seen in a while. Evans stepping out. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. Paxson does. And Pippen. 
Pippen gets the new 24. Pippen shooting. And again, it's Pippen on the loose ball with a minute 10 remaining in the fourth. Jordan saw the opening. Horace Grant with 18 points. And he's extended to a three-point Chicago lead. A 40 to 25 rebound advantage for the Chicago Bulls. If you're going to give him two, three shots at the basket, you're going to have problems. Just under one minute remaining in the fourth. Shot clock at six. Perkins. Yes. Back to a one-point lead. 45 seconds remaining fourth quarter. Game three of the best of seven. Series tied at one. And a timeout requested by Phil Jackson. 39 and one tenth seconds remaining of the fourth. 14 on the shot clock. That's the scene when we return. The Bulls now have one timeout left. Lakers with two. 39 and one tenth seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The Bulls have come from behind. Lakers at one point led by as many as 13. Bulls with the ball at a one point lead. How do you play it if you're the Chicago Bulls? The decision right now is do you want to take a quick shot where you get two for one? Get it up quick within four, five, six seconds, then force the Lakers to have to shoot knowing that you'll get a possession back? Or do you want to go for your best possible shot, get it in Jordan's hands, give him a screen or let him go one on one and create? And he does go one on one. Again, not able to hit. He bots, rebounds. Lakers have the two timeouts, but they're moving down. They are trailing by one. 20 seconds to go. 14 on the shot clock. Going for the game winner. He bots, fumbled it, recovered, and hit. Yes, and it counts. Great hands. He actually loses it, gets it back, possession of it away from Jordan, and then has the ability to concentrate, finish it, and says, oops, I actually made that one. Mike Dunleavy checking it out, and then as Devots put it off glass, he reacted. In the process, Scotty Pippen fouled out, and Devots to the line. He is one for one from the free throw line. He has shot 78% from the line during the playoffs. Lakers only 13 for 22 from the free throw line. 10 and 9 tenth seconds remaining in the fourth. The Lakers now lead it 91-90. Devots a 70% shooter during the regular season. Chicago calling its final timeout. The Lakers, by virtue of the three-point play by Vladi Divac, have taken a 92-90 lead on the Chicago Bulls. Right at this point, Magic could have called a timeout. Everyone was cut off. He elected to make the pass to Divac. It's not a good pass. Magic's arm got hit by Jordan, but Devots is able to convert at the end, perhaps his biggest basket of the year. See, Jordan actually fouls Magic on the pass off. The foul could have been called there. As it turns out, it may have been better for the Lakers that it was not. And then going back to his mentor to say, did I do good? Magic Johnson still demonstrating the emotion that we saw at Michigan State and that we saw as a rookie in the pros, I, I can recall opening night when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar came up with a game-winning shot, first game of the season, and he was hugged by Magic. Kareem couldn't understand what was going on. 81 more games to go, and tonight's Miller Genuine Draft Player of the Game is Vladi Divac on behalf of Lottie, NBC and Villa Genuine Draft will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Lottie Devots in his second NBA season 
out of Yugoslavia. He'll play for his home country and the 1992 Olympics following this NBA final. And Vladi will join the Yugoslav national team for the European Championships, which begin in late June in Rome. So 10 and 9 tenths seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Lakers with a two-point lead. And the question here is, first looking for the two, and if you have to, you could be forced into taking the three if it's open. Well, let's go back to game one for the Lakers. They're down. They go for it. Perkins knocks out the three. They go home and win. Right now, you're talking about Chicago, who is the third best three-point shooting team in the NBA this year, shooting over 36%, having to make that decision. Do you win it on the road with the three, or do you go for the tie and try to go into overtime, understanding that Pippen right now is out of the game. They're shorthanded with one of their key guys. Lakers just took another timeout. They wanted to see what Chicago was presenting offensively. So the Lakers have one timeout remaining. The Bulls do not have any timeouts left how would you play it you go for the two first and if it's not there attempt the three with john paxson on the floor with hodges on the floor and with the ability to put the ball in jordan's hand in a spread situation i take the three right now go for the win understand Whoa. there's two more games back here yet to play and then go back home for two very gutsy from the sideline aren't we you go for the three for the win now you see if i would have said go for the right. tie you would have attacked oh. the other way absolutely a reminder, Sunday night, the NBA Finals continue here on NBC at a special time. It'll be 7 p.m. Eastern, Game 4 of the Magic versus Michael Showdown from right here in L.A. Lakers and the Bulls continuing their battle for the coveted NBA trophy. Game 4 of the NBA Finals, Sunday at 7. Please note that change in time. It'll be 4 o'clock on the West Coast. And then game five here in Los Angeles on Wednesday, 9 o'clock Eastern time. High point, Matt Devox, 24, Perkins, 23. Magic has 22 for Chicago. Jordan with 21 and Pippen with 19. You mentioned Sam Perkins hitting that clutch shot from downtown to give the victory to the Lakers. And then seconds later, Bulls certainly had an opportunity. Michael Jordan, as we flash back off the crossover, a shot that rimmed in and out. And the Lakers came away with the victory in game one. Right now, the Bulls electing to take the ball in the backcourt rather than advance it to half court, feeling they have a better chance of getting it into Jordan's hands there than they would if they tried to take it at the half court line. And the Bulls do not have any timeouts remaining. Craig Hodges, the three point specialist, has checked in. Here's Jordan. On the pull up, yes, and the game is tied at 92 with three and four tenths seconds remaining. Lakers call for a timeout, so they will use their final timeout. Michael Jordan with the clutch jump shot. This time he hit it, and he had not been going well during the course of the second half. With the threat of the three-point shooters on the floor, you can't come and help quite as quickly on Michael. He gets Scott back into an area where he feels comfortable. After coming down, he almost seems once again to be bothered by the bad knees. The right side of the floor has been cleared out. He's got a full head of steam, and now it's just a matter of elevating before Divots can make the rotation over. Prior to converting that field goal. Jordan 2 for 11 from the field in the second half. Overall, he is 9 for 25 under his usual standards. Jordan has 23 points. 3 and 4 tenths seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The Lakers and the Bulls tied at 92. Dramatics at both ends. First, Lottie Divac off the recovery, able to hit on the drive through the foul for the three-point play, and the Bulls come right back. If you're looking at the two teams, the Bulls have more people with the ability to put the ball on the floor and create off the dribble. 
The Lakers more of a post-up, staggered team, pounded in down low with only 3.4 seconds remaining. You need a guy right now where when he catches it on the inbounds pass with 3.4, that's plenty of time. To give you an idea, you can dribble from baseline to baseline in four seconds. So 3.4 is a long time, providing you have someone that can create off the dribble and either pull a defender to pass for an open shot or perhaps take it and score or get fouled. Let's go over to Steve Jones. The Los Angeles Lakers spent that entire time out talking about getting the ball inside. They'll go either to Perkins or Worthy. Magic Johnson inbound passer, most dangerous guy on a return pass. All right, Steve, and Magic will throw in from center court. Both clubs are out of timeouts, shuffling by the Bulls. Will Perdue has checked in, and he will guard Perkins. Joe Crawford Delay with the game. whistle. Delay game taken by Michael Jordan that time to expose the play that the Lakers were going to run. As soon as Joe Crawford handed the ball to Magic, Jordan got up too close. The delay game was called. The rest of the players hopefully got a look at the play. Balls with the delay of game to give. Divots. Jordan knocked it away. Scott got it off. And we go to overtime. The Los Angeles Lakers, three up, three down in overtime games. The Chicago Bulls, 0-2 in OT. The Lakers and Bulls tied at 92. Back with the overtime in a moment. Welcome back to the Forum in Inglewood. Marv Albert, Mike Fratello, Ahmad Rashad, and Steve Jones. Game three of the best of seven. And they're tied at 92. The Los Angeles Lakers able to take a, a two-point lead off this bucket by Devots fouled in the act, went to the line, hit the uh, free throw, and then with three and four-tenth seconds remaining in regulation, the Chicago Bulls using their possession wisely as Michael Jordan went behind the back against Byron Scott and was able to convert to tie the game. Both players answering with the big baskets at crucial times for their teams. Bulls electing to go for the tie. Let's get it into overtime, and then we'll play from there. It's a new ball game. The Chicago Bulls have come back from a 13-point deficit at one stretch during the third quarter. The Lakers were in the midst of an 18-2 run, but the Bulls closed the third quarter strong, and we are headed to OT. Let's go over to Ahmad. All right, Marv, one thing is going to bother the Bulls just during that last play. Michael Jordan hurt the tip of his big toe. They've taken it up, taken a look at it, and it's going to be painful, but he'll try to go with it. Marv? All right, Ahmad. The Lakers were involved with one overtime game in the playoffs. They defeated Golden State 124-119. Keep an eye here on Jordan's foot. This is where the injury takes place as Divac tries to split him. Right there in that little scurry of players is where the injury took place. Mike Dunleavy inserting the rookie Eldon Campbell, who has not played at all this evening for the opening tip. He's trying to preserve Devots, who has five fouls. Devots will come on. Shortly Campbell winning the tip. Campbell up front with Perkins and Worthy. Johnson in the backcourt along with Scott. Campbell gets it right back out. As we get underway in overtime, Campbell rejected. The Lakers came right out and tried the back pick lob play again. This time for Campbell, wasn't quite there. Levingston opens up front with Cartwright and Grant, Maxson and Jordan, and the backcourt. Scotty Pippen fouling out at the end of regulation. Here's Jordan, lost control. And the Lakers on the run. Magic dumped it off, Worthy could not handle. Back come the Bulls. Magic Johnson slow to get up. Hickson throws it home. Magic was in a collision at the other end, shaken up, but looks to be all right. Magic, after the dribble penetration, dropped it off, off to Worthy, thinking James was going to move to the basket. He hadn't made the move, the resulting turnover. Two-point lead for Chicago. Campbell getting inside. 
And there's the ball reversal that we had talked about early in the game that the Lakers had to get through. They started it in on the right side, reversed it all the way around to the left side of the floor. Easy score for Campbell. Elvin Campbell, a six foot 11 rookie out of Clemson, number one draft pick of the Los Angeles Lakers. Game tied at 94. Cartwright, hand checked by Perkins. Shot clocked out of two. Paxson had a flank it. And at 40, gone by in the five minute overtime session. Lakers and Bulls at 94 apiece. Cartwright slapping it away. It will be Los Angeles ball with six on the shot clock. And a hand for Eldon Campbell as Bloody Devonts returns. Do you think that uh, Magic and Michael might get the day off from practice tomorrow? I think there's a pretty good shot. A lot of minutes logged by both. Scott, he cannot buy one. 0 for 6, but Devonts got it back out. Johnson for three. Cartwright rebounds, knocked away by Scott. It will be Chicago ball. Lakers now 0 for 5 from three-point land. Just under three minutes remaining in overtime. The series tied at one. This game three of the best of seven NBA championship series. Here's Jordan. Yes! Michael Jordan hitting on the driving reverse to give his club a 96-94 lead. Normally, the Lakers are excellent at walling off or sealing off the entry lane to the basket. That time, no one moved as Jordan found the scene. Perkins, strip, and a foul call. Holding foul on Jordan. That's five. Jordan makes the move. Devots never comes across. He lets Jordan come to him. He can't do that. It's going to be too late. He creates too many ways and invents new ones each time out to score. Sam Perkins to the line off that foul on Jordan. Scotty Pippen has fouled out. Strong game for Pippen. 19 points, 14 rebounds. Perkins has hit four of five from the line. So Jordan and Devots playing with five. Twenty-five for Perkins, and the game is tied at ninety-six. Two twenty remaining in overtime. It came off the screen, but Magic stayed right with him. And they're making Magic work at the defensive end, that's for sure. Good luck by Jordan. Cartwright could not convert. And the official Joe Crawford saying, stay right here. It is a loose ball foul against the Lakers. It's on Scott, his third. Left in overtime. The spin by Jordan and hits on the reverse. Michael saving it for overtime. Two key buckets. And the Bulls lead at 98 96. Good pressure by Chicago. Magic in trouble. And a timeout taken by the Lakers. Jordan loves to use the rim to come up on the other side. He drives baseline, sees the rotation coming, has the great ability to hang and reverse it for the score. Jordan, who loves to drive baseline, uses the defense by bringing it up on one side and then hanging and reversing over to the other side. One of the reasons why we always wanted to force him to the middle of the floor Jordan likes it. He says, we got him now. Let's go. And Michael and Magic have each logged 50 minutes of playing time in this overtime get-together. 27.7 rebounds, 9 assists for Jordan. And Magic, 22.6 rebounds and 10 assists. Michael Jordan has got it going here in OT at a poor shooting second half. 
Jordan overall is 11 for 27 from the field. Magic 7 for 13. The Bulls by 2. 98, 96 with a minute and 44 left in overtime. Magic lost it and recaptured. Worthy got it back out. Shot clock down to 3. Perkins to the hook. And the rebound snatched by Jordan. Michael Jordan for a Horace Grant. And the Bulls lead 100 to 96. Both of those sequences, the defensive end of the floor, where they're so aggressive and tenacious, and the offensive end just showing the athleticism of the Bulls team. They're just always there bothering you. Perkins. He forced it up. And a foul called on Devos. So he is fouled out. Lonnie Devots picks up number six. An outstanding game for Devots. 24 points, seven rebounds. He hit 11 of 15 from the field. Eldon Campbell, who played briefly at the start of this overtime, checks back in, replacing Devots. We're down to 107 remaining. In overtime, well, the Los Angeles Lakers broke through the home court advantage in Chicago in game one, and the Bulls trying to do the same right here to take a 2-1 lead in the best of seven. Jordan posting, and Jordan foul. The inexperienced player, Elvin Campbell, the guy that's supposed to come and double team from the top, goes a little bit too late. You can't wait that long on Michael Jordan. He gets in the seam, uses the arm a little bit to hook Byron Scott, and that's what Byron Scott was hoping the call would be. Michael Jordan is four for four from the foul line. A dramatic come from behind effort by the Bulls, who could have been run out of it in the third quarter. 18-2 spurt by the Lakers. They led by as many as 13. They were on fire at one point. The Bulls missed nine consecutive shots. They were able to settle down. They closed strong in the third to get back into it. And they now lead 102-96 as the Lakers take a timeout. 53 and 5 10 seconds remaining in overtime. And this represents the Bulls' biggest lead of the night. The Chicago Bulls on top of the Los Angeles Lakers, 102-96 with 53 and 5 tenths seconds remaining in overtime. The Bulls in excellent shape with the lead. Three timeouts left. Lakers with only one. The Bulls also have one foul to give. When we resume, it will be Laker ball. Six point Chicago lead. Out of 45 seconds to go in overtime. Magic from downtown, and Jordan able to field it. That Laker sequence, not what Mike Dudley had in mind. Now, they were trying to get the uh, quick step back by the screener for the three-point shot, who was Sam Perkins. Couldn't get it. Now Jordan's just going to run the clock till he gets a good shot for himself or for a teammate. 24-second clock is at three. Grant launches. And hits! When it's going good, it's going good. Horace Grant, who has come up big the last two games, makes it 9 of 11 from the field for 22 points. And time running out on the Lakers. Final seconds of the overtime. Drew. Chicago Bulls have returned the favor, beating the Lakers at the forum. And they take a 2-1 lead in the best of seven. Michael Jordan finishes with 29. Nine assists, eight rebounds. He had six of his 29 in overtime. And Chicago wins 104 
96. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. The producer of the NBA on NBC, Tommy Roy. Today's telecast directed by Andy Rosenberg and our statistician, Mr. Stats, Elliot Cow. High point men of the game, 29 for Jordan. Grant with 22. Pippen at 19. Pippen fouled out. Magic Johnson with 22 points, 10 assists. 24 for Vladi Divac, who also fouled out. 19 for Worthy. Perkins with 25. Well, for Mike Fratello, Ahmad Rashad, Steve Jones, I'm Marv Albert. This has been a presentation of the NBA on NBC.